Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres and uh, I've been gonna make a video about one of my latest adventures in in the farm world adventures in farming and uh, I've been gonna do this for a while we used to do this we used to raise rabbits long long time ago and it kind of brings up the subject of uh, Uh, commercial farming versus homesteading again and I might as well expound on that just real quick but if you're in commercial farming uh, you're, you're raising a lot of maybe one thing converting that into dollars and then that is what you live on so that is what you do for a living um, we're homesteading you're not doing that you're sharing what you what you create on your farm with families and friends so you're not really doing business with retail stores and things like that not even farmers market not even doing that so we have the ability to you know keep our day job and diversify into things that of are of interest and in my case, the things that are of interest are things that help me to make a gain for my family and my way of life here. So we raised rabbits a long time ago and they breed prolifically. And back then we were just buying feed for them, you know, little pellets and it went well, but when you penciled it out, uh, if you paid to have somebody process the rabbits, you weren't doing that good, right? But then we got into processing. So we learned how to process our own animals, and we saved a whole lot there. And that is kind of across the board. We, pr we process everything that we raise here on, on this farm. So then I started to learn more about foraging. So like with my pigs, if I can grow 80% of their feed then my bottom line is better on a pig once it's processed. If I can do the process myself, it's even better. So you kind of follow that way of thinking. Um, so when I have wanted to get into rabbits for a long time now, it's because I like eating rabbits. It's a good meat to have. Sorry, that's a little shaky. My smooth move thing is broke. Um, sometimes I can do this, sometimes I can't. I don't know but um, so you walk around a place like this and there's all kinds of plants and we're learning all kinds of things about the different plants that we can eat and so I've spent some time now going around and looking at different plants that grow on our farm one of the things that grows here prolifically is sunflowers and this is not something that we really planted. Somebody planted them here years ago and now they seem to be everywhere. But they're pleasant to look at and everything. They grow real tall, real fast. And then we usually just cut them down in the fall and burn them. Don't really do anything with them and I think that that's probably a mistake, you know. So enter the rabbits. Here's what I've done. I have two cages side by side and you can see I just use those um, I think they're 15 gallon barrels and they use them in the dairy industry for chemicals that they clean their equipment with. Got two of them and I just kind of cut them off a little bit on the bottom so they'd sit flat. This one is the doe, so she's got a floor in hers. This one's the buck, so he doesn't. He doesn't like going in his anyway, but I figure this is where they'll be. So they're under that roof partially, and then I'm gonna put a piece of steel across the top there to really protect them well. And then in the winter time, I'll put a lot more bedding in there and things like that. But with two of them side by side, I can control their breeding and they breed. You can get a, a litter of rabbits, I think about every 45 days, I think. I got a book that I've had for going on 20 years now I just need to read it again uh, and then you take the babies out of these pens out of the dough pen there we'll take them out we'll put them in a feeder pen and in that feeder pen we just 
keep feed to them all the time and they grow pretty fast. You know, these particular ones are Flemish Giants. So you're gonna get a bigger bang for the buck. And then out of your, your herd of rabbits, if that's what it's called, you can pull out the breeding stock that you think you wanna use. And you know, some people have, have done this commercially actually. Uh, I actually know somebody, two people that have done it commercially and did quite well with it. Okay, so what, you know, how am I gonna use this animal to my advantage on the homestead? All right, well, here's, here's this. Let me open it up. Got these guys up high now and they don't, they're not jumpers. And let me show you, this guy's name is Peter, what he does with it. Let's see if he's interested. You want some of this, bud? Yep, he's interested. Okay, that's the flower. These are the leaves. They're kind of thorny and I've tried them. I don't think I'll be making any salads out of them if I don't have to, if I have other stuff. But let's see if uh, the doe's name is Alice. Let's see if she's interested in. No, not right now, huh? Okay. Well, I already did this test off camera, so I know that she likes them. Um, there's a couple of things to know here if you're going to breed them. Uh, I just point out a few things here, like her little shelter right there. She's got to have a place where she can build a nest. And you want the nest pointing so that you can look in. And that's what I've done there. Our last time we did it, we had boxes that sat in the back. And you never quite knew if she was... Um, taking care of babies or just a fur ball, but now we'll be able to see in there pretty well. And you want to take the dough and put the, I mean, you want to take the buck and put the buck in with the dough, right? And usually um, it's quick. I mean, he gets it done really quick. And uh, then you know, other technologies that we've used here is uh, drip irrigation. We can keep water to them all the time. So there's minimal care. I place this so that when I'm sitting in the morning, I can see what's going on here. I want these guys kind of in the, the courtyard here where there's dogs around that will keep them protected. Um, these guys are kind of escape artists. They're good at it. They like to get out and run around and both of these have escaped several times, but now that we've built this, they're going to be happy in here. And, uh, you know, we, you can just make sort of a, a game of it, really. You go around and you pick odd things that grow in our environment. You say, geez, I wonder if they'll want this. And all of a sudden, those plants that we were calling weeds become an asset because it's feed for our rabbits. And I also saw this thing, another homesteader, uh, forgive me if I mispronounce her, her site, but it's like Dirt Patch Girl or something like that. And I just happened to come across it. And she was uh, picking things and then hanging them, hanging them up and making hay out of them. All right, so she was picking plants and drying them. So here it is summertime, there's all kinds of plants. You can be pulling those things up by the roots, throw a cord around it, hang it up someplace, and you can dry all kinds of stuff to utilize in the wintertime when, you know, snow's on the ground and there's not a lot out there. Another thing I noticed with these guys, uh, you know, I, a lot of you know I have a junk bread contract that I use for the pigs. I also use it for the chickens. I also use it for the cows. And I can use it for these guys. They like bread. So uh, if, we, if our goal is to put weight on these animals so we can get them to the size that they'll be useful for us as food, 
Uh, we want to get them big quick, so giving them bread is not a bad thing, and I've been doing it here for uh, since I built this, which is about a week now, and I did it slow at first because with cows you have to be very careful. If you give them too much bread too quick, uh, their rumen can shut down. I was unsure about these guys, so I just did it, but I did it slowly, and they go through bread really well and they seem to be doing fine now. I don't see any adverse effects here. Um, the nice thing about rabbits is a breeding pair like this was $40 and I probably paid a little too much but that's what the girl wanted and it was here and actually these rabbits were brought to us to be processed and I said to the lady oh I've been wanting to get some rabbits she says, I'll sell you a couple of these. And then when we said, okay, how much do you want after we not process them? Um, well, I paid $60 for a pair and I thought that was a little much, but anyway, so we may have paid a little bit more than we should have, but it doesn't matter really. Um, the gain that you're gonna get from the animals like this when they're breeding and you've got plenty of feed around, you know, you'll absorb that very quickly. I mean, really quickly, what, what now, what is 40 bucks really, you know, um, rabbits became huge in, um, in France during the war because rabbits can be raised inside. They don't make any noise. And in France, you know, it was occupied by German troops and they would just take everything that they could find. So a lot of people raise rabbits in their homes and uh, I was corrected the other night in the on the call-in show and I, I said that Hassenpfeffer is a French term it's actually a German term and uh, you know in Bugs Bunny the chef was always chasing around bugs and he wanted to make Hassenpfeffer out of them right so I don't know I've never had Hassenpfeffer but I have had uh, fried rabbit and I like it and you know it's a good place for a homesteader that maybe can't have cows or pigs but you can have these any place and uh you know i i wouldn't go in making an inquiry i just put them someplace on your property where it's kind of sheltered and it's not like they crow in the morning nobody will know you have them unless you go run in your mouth to your neighbors that are turn you into the food nazis but this is a, a good legitimate source of protein that uh, that you can do and you know a rabbit as as trading stock is very good too you know excellent source of protein all right we'll call it off there this is mark from baker's green acres remember